So far we have just looked at how we can convert our numbers to our strings. But let us now move towards a generalized string to num numbered conversion. So when we talk about string to numbered conversion, we need two different functions for this purpose right now. Now, when we talk about string to number conversion, what JavaScript needs to do is that it needs to destroy its previous data type of string and this needs to be converted and replaced by a new data type of number. So, basically, to perform such operation, we need two form of functions or two functions that are actually independent but they basically do the same thing. So, the first function that we'll be looking at is called int function and the other function that we'll be looking at is called the purse float function so these two functions are basically pressing functions so what pressing is is that we'll be looking shortly into that but what pressing do is that it takes a certain number of characters or values inside it and it looks each of it it suppose it has got uh, uh, five characters so this parsing means that this five characters suppose it has got a string inside it with a value something like this so in here we have one two three four five six seven seven characters so what this parsing function will do it will look each of this uh, numbers or each of these characters individually and determine whether it's a number or it's a non-numeric literal so pressing generally means it will go through each of these characters and it will determine whether it's a number because we are going to look at the person function this function will generally look at each of these characters that will be passed inside it as strings and then it will determine what sort of data type are they so in this example suppose if we take this uh, string as an example we have three digits or three number uh, numbers that uh, that that are also known as numeric literals but after that these are non numeric literals so this parsing function will immediately stop when it encounters uh, encounters this string or non numeric literals as it encounters uh, non-numeric literals, it just prints what it has encountered previously. So it has got these three digits, one, two, three. So these three digits will be printed on the browser. So as, it, as its name implies, this press in function only looks at or only accepts integers. So basically what are integers? Integers are positive or negative whole numbers. I think you're quite familiar with such arithmetics because they're basic mathematics and uh, what we know as whole numbers is that if you're still confused or, or if you have forgotten what whole numbers are, whole numbers are uh, numbers like 1, 20, 100. These numbers don't hold anything after their uh, decimal point. So we can't just say this is a whole number because it contains three decimal places it contains numbers or digits after its decimal points but this is a whole number even if it's a negative one it's a whole number because it does not contain a decimal point and digits after the decimal point so when we talk about float or when you want to work with this decimal values this positive or negative decimal values uh, this will be used inside this purse float a uh, purse float function so you should not worry much about functions right now but we'll, we'll only see how they work in the later chapter we will look more closely at what functions are how can we create our own functions and what they can do for our programs so basically when we talk about decimals or decimal numbers we need to use this purse float function this purse float function actually looks at the string in a similar fashion as this purse uh, in function so if we have characters like this suppose uh, 1.2 then w suppose we have got uh, something like uh, let's say we have got 2.3 and then we have got a b 
and now what we see in here is that the first two are decimal numbers and we also have got no numerical literals so this press float function will start pressing from the left and it sees that it has got a decimal a positive decimal uh, number in front and it will go on and print it on the browser and it also finds that the second number is also a positive decimal number so it purses it or it reads it and determines this to be a decimal number and it prints it on the browser as positive 2.3 uh, this positive sign won't be included but for clarity's sake I'm using it and when it reaches this part this non numeric literal part it emits and stops the pressing right there and it prints whatever was on the left or whatever the numbers were whenever even if it's a number that comes after this non numeric literals suppose it finds that the number one is after this a b it won't print it on the browser so enough of theory let's have a look uh, how they react in real life so let us create another new variable we have created so many variables here but it's really easy and it's really useful when you create variables because they're more dynamic rather than storing it directly uh, inside our functions so let us create another variable called oh, perhaps we'll be needing two more variables so seventh or parse one we can name it as parse one and what we need here is what we need here is a string value the first string value will have integers of and norm numeric literals and the second purse 2 let's name the variable purse 2 and this will consist of another string and this string will be 1 point two three five with string literals and another number after this string literals and let's end this and now we shall be using our press int function first press there we go and it must be a string so we must be passing the press one uh, variables value inside this person in function and uh, let's save this we must change the parameter of this alert function and we should change it to purse 3 and now uh, let's save this code and we must output this on our HTML file let's open up the browser and clearly what we see in here is 1 2 3 so this is really easy to understand and if in, even if we look inside this press three variable this press three variable stores the value of one two three and it prints on the alert function now what happens in here is that uh, the press in function after encountering all this after reading through or pressing through all this one uh, numeric literals it prints it on the browser and when it reaches this non numeric literal it immediately stops it pressing it as it stops pressing it then uh, only stores the first three values or the first three numbers or digits inside this variable now let's see what happens if we change this uh, or if we, so we can create another variable called press flow uh, for and we can assign the function of parse float and pass parse 2 that contains another string and let's save this I think I made a mistake in here yes and I should have changed this parse 4 yes and it's working perfectly now what we see in here was exactly what the thing that I explained in here what it sees this press float function actually starts reading from the left 
and it starts parsing or determining the number or reading the number from the left and when it reaches 5 it sees that it has got two non-numeric literals that are not numbers or they can't be converted to numbers because they can't be converted to numbers it immediately stops parsing after the number or digit of 5 and when it stops parsing it complex, uh, completely f uh, forgets or it completely stops reading uh, after this 5 and it ignores the number 1, 2 and when it ignores the number 1 it means that it even if we add or go on adding more numbers to this variable it won't certainly read them so it will just store the value until this 5 until it has got the numbers uh, initially and it will store them inside this parse float uh, parse for variable and this will be converted by the parse float number this parse float number will read both the integer and the decimal values but it, when we use this parse int function this function actually strips anything after the decimal point so let's see what happens if we pass parse 2 inside parse 3 and we shall print it out on our browser let's change this and let's save this and now we have only the value of 1 why is this happening to this uh, alert function because when we find that what we find in here is that the integer is actually the number one so when it encounters a decimal number or when this person in function encounters a decimal number inside the string it actually truncates or cuts off all the decimal points or all the decimal numbers after the decimal point and it only prints up the first integer value that it encounters or it meets so this is all about the person and first person float function now there is another interesting part to this parse int and parse float functions the parse int function itself can take two arguments we haven't actually talked about we haven't actually talked about the uh, arguments in here specifically because we haven't yet discussed functions we'll be discussing it in chap in, in the later chapter in, in the next chapter perhaps so let us just uh, view what an argument in here what a second argument in here perhaps will do to this parse int function now the second argument for this parse int function is called a uh, radix this radix is actually used to determine what sort of number we are going to output on our browser it might be a numeral system of decimal that we that has a base 10 or do we want a binary system that's more familiar for the machines or the computers that you, we use and that has got a base of 2 so when we get a number with a base of 2 it means it only has two digits 0 and 1 when you talk about decimals it has got 0 through 9 so this we are more familiar with this decimal uh, num numeral system so if you're really interested about learning the architecture architectural designs or the architectural uh, workings inside a computer please refer to my video on assembly language and PC organization so uh, let us get back to our topic